Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben on this Holy Tuesday. Holy Week is off and running. Uh, we have two services this week, Monday, Thursday at 5.30, and then Good Friday service on Friday at 5.30 as well. Uh, for those families that are wanting something Eastery to do, we're doing an Easter egg hunt. It's looking a little different. If you would like to participate in that Easter egg hunt, it's not too late to sign up. So contact the church office, let me know, uh, and let the adventure begin. Uh, my, my kiddos and I are going to go on Saturday to Miss Ann's house, and we're going to do an Easter egg hunt there. Um, so it's just one host family and one family of kiddos. Uh, the host family puts out the eggs that we provided that morning or whenever you schedule the time. And then the kids show up and the, um, the host family can watch the joy and excitement. It's a way for us to care for some of the elderly people in our congregation that haven't been able to come to church in a while. Um, and it's, give something exciting to do to our fam for our families in the church as well. So it fits needs on all sides of the congregation. If you're interested as a, a family or a host family to, to be a part of that, it's not too late. Contact the church office. Let us make our beginning this morning. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. Pulling out our YouVersion Bible app, the verse of the day is from Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is part of the Romans road. If you have memorized certain portions of scripture, Paul lays out some amazing stuff in Romans um, that is often used in memorization. This is one of those. Uh, but because this sentence in this verse begins with the word but, it's probably important for us to look at what comes before that, what starts the sentence, which is in verse 7. Uh Paul writes, for one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So this language it moves beyond martyrdom into this sphere of heroics. And this analogy is one of contrast. It's not one of comparison. Paul's point is that what God has done, there is no analogy for it. There is no analogy for what God has done for us. Humans, we're, we are reluctant to sacrifice for others. We may sit, we might uh, cop out of that one by saying, I haven't had the opportunity, but put yourself in the place. We, we would be reluctant to sacrifice for others. A few people might die for someone who is particularly righteous or for someone who has done something good for them. But even these are rare occasions, Paul is saying. Christ died not for righteous people. He didn't die for people who helped him. He died for people who are sinners. But Paul makes an interesting statement. Jesus died for people in the act of sinning. In that state of sinning against him, he still chose to die. While they're sinning against him, it's not like God looks down and goes, ah, you know, this is too much. I can't believe I'm sacrificing for you and you're not even relenting and stopping from the sinning. So I'm not going to, Jesus, come down off the cross. We're done with this. 
uh, that's, that's not what we have. While in the state of sinning against him, which we place ourselves in that group too, in our state of sinning, he still chooses to die for sinners. This is grace. That's, that's what this is. Grace. Being given something that is undeserved, that you didn't work for, that you didn't earn. That's what we have here. While in the state of sinning, Jesus Christ still died so that you could be reconciled. So that you're no longer an enemy of God. That is the gospel. That's the gospel. In a nutshell, if that's how you want to look at it, he's, we are saved by his life. Hmm. While even in the state of it all. Paul, Paul lays out that we are blind, dead, and enemies of God. And yet still, Jesus died for us. That's the power. This is worth telling people about. That's what excites me for the gospel, is that this is not conditional. It is there. Jesus died once for all. We got to tell people about this. We got to tell people. That's if, if anything comes out of COVID, the church will be reinvigorated towards this purpose. Pour yourself over this verse. This is our passion as Christians to share this story. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you sent your son to die, to suffer for sinners, not, not for righteous people, for sinners. Lord, this is without an analogy to compare it to. We don't do this as humans, but you have done this for us. So that we could be a part of your family. Understanding how much you love us. We don't even understand how big. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be reinvigorated. To share this wonderful gospel news. With anyone who will hear it. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. That's it. That's it. That's that's the gospel of grace right there. Um, share it. Share it. Be a part of what God has called us to do. And rest in the joy that it's for you. Have a wonderful day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Holy Wednesday for some more time in God's Word. Have a blessed day in Christ.